this stoop, how much of a personality this stoop had in the movie. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Everything comes from the stoop, everything. It's beautiful. Well, I forget his name. I was walking up the steps, and he, because I, I kicked his ass, then I was walking up the steps. He lived on the third floor, I lived on the fifth. <laughs> and as I was walking past him, he went, ah, came out of his apartment. And he, he stared me with a, a knitting needle. Wow. In, in the net over here, and stared me with a pencil, a pencil right here. A pencil hit. Well, Francisco Rivera stared me with a pencil right here. Pencil. So I know what, and I had to lay it in there for 25 years. Really? You're lucky. I've seen it for 25 years. You're lucky because they had they rushed me to the hospital because I had headaches two weeks later and they took the lead out of my head. Wow, well it was in your head. Mine was only in the hand. Yeah. I, I, was, I had lead poisoning. And why did he stab you? Because I kicked, kicked his ass head? the day before. So, he, But he was waiting for me. He saw me come up and he was, as soon as I came out, what the fuck? That's amazing. Oh, the Italians never forget. <laughs> he had a fucking vendetta. He had a vendetta. Johnny He's like sitting there stewing the night before. He probably barely oh, slept. Oh, He's and, stewing. And I was on bro How old were you? Maybe 15. Yeah. You can't really tell. Every story has to be vague. That's what I'm talking about. How you shot a movie like that movie. Yeah. And still kept it vague. Because you know a lot of people would have been like, hey, listen, that's my story. <laughs> you know how many people said that? You know, do you know how many people said that, hey, you, you stole my fucking movie? Of course. You, you, I, I can't tell you. How they many. never wrote a movie, but they're like, you stole my movie. I, I, had a, I, had a, I had a fat Joey and a big nose and all. I said, well, you should have wrote it then. Yeah. You didn't write it. Exactly. I wrote it. You yeah. should have fucking wrote it. Yeah. Oh, my God. You know how many people have said that, that oh, I stole course. their story? Oh, oh my God. God. I see. Yeah, but my father, your, your father was a bus driver, was he really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. Yeah. yeah, he took the whole thing. He took the whole thing from me. It's like, how did he hear it? I don't know. I guess he knew one of my cousins. They must have said it one day. You fucking believe that? <laughs> yeah, of course. Oh, the story about the bikers. That's my story. Right, that right. happened. It's like that's you the only me? time it happened. I'm sure people tell you that. You know, Colin took yeah. that. Colin took that from. Maybe yeah. not so much you. You're so. Oh, no, they do. They do. They do. You know, people have done that. Really? Of course. You know who's that's the one? Said, Sp yeah. Spielberg said success. Uh, success has one father, failure has met is an orphan. Yes. Yeah. The success has a million fathers, failure is an orphan. Failure is an orphan. Not that's Spielberg. Classic. I think it's somebody deeper than that. Yeah. Well, man, I don't I mean, want to Google it. I'll, you know. Yeah. But I mean, if I knew it off the top of my head, that would have yeah. been, you wouldn't have liked that. We would have had to cut that part, right? If I was like, no, that's Aristophanes. I didn't know it, thank God. Uh, maybe it wasn't you? Spielberg. But I, somebody, of course it wasn't Spielberg. Somebody said somebody that. Somebody big. Somebody big. A philosopher. A philosopher. So this is the market, I call him. And the market was like, you know how this happened? The market happened was, because we, before the market, they used to come in through the street with the horse and wagon. And they said, fish and ice man. And By food. the way, one of the, one of the most, and a movie unto itself was the opening three minutes yes. of the movie. And the guy calling you guys a Mary. A Mary, yeah, he called everybody Mary. A Mary was one of his expressions. Exactly, so it, it was LaGuardia. Uh, Fiorello, uh, Fiorello, Guardia. Fiorello LaGuardia is the one who said, it's disgraceful for Italians to have walk in the street. Let's build a market. He's the one who built the market. To have what in the street? To have the peddlers in the street with the horses. Oh. He thought it was beneath the Italians. Right. So he built the market so people could just go here. And that guy was like the last of the people. Like, yeah, he was great. one of the last. How yeah. great was he, by the way? Is that a real guy? Was that an actor? Oh, yeah. He used to have this big white horse with oh, the slope down his middle. No, that guy was a that guy was just a he was just an actor. He was an actor. He's great. Yeah, he's yeah great. little Mary's. So, oh, oh yeah. you know, I saw it when I saw the movie the first time was in L.A. Right. It was like 19 when it just came out. So for some reason in the theater, two guys sitting in front of me were like central casting of like they looked like Italian linebackers, like they grew up <laughs> definitely grew up in in the neighborhood. Right. And when the opening happened, Johnny on the Pony. You know, skellies. Yeah, nobody did that. No, nope. they looked at each other. These big, and you could tell they were obviously a couple of shady characters. Yeah. They weren't, you know, and they looked at each other like, and you could see their faces soften. Yeah, they're right in front of me, and, and I was like, because nobody ever did those games on. Oh them. my God, it was amazing. Yeah, yeah, Bob, I got to, you know, I I said it once, and I say it again. I, I felt I wrote a great script. Yes. But, you know, when you give it to the director. He did a great job. He did an amazing job. He did an job. amazing job. And he loved it so much he never directed again. But anyway, um, 
Must have really yeah. been a fun experience for the guy. He never stepped behind the camera again. No, he did. Good shepherd. Oh, well, yeah. that doesn't count. But okay. um, no, I don't know. Um, but how about one of my favorite moments early on? Sorry, one of my favorite moments is the girls in the car, and the guy says, "And the girl goes, you wish, you wish." Yeah, it's like all those little moments it's in that first the neighborhood. Three minutes, and you know, and when they're driving, all the girls used to drive the convertible, and their heads would go. Yeah, yeah. Listen. Remember that listening to the music? Oh, uh, it was great. Wow. That was my favorite. Yeah. And those girls across the street scene when they yell, when you guys are yelling across. Yeah. There's yeah. so much beauty in that movie. It's, you know? it's, it's just so honest and real. The stick ball. That's why it's eternal. That's why it's uh, iconic. You know yeah, I mean? yeah. The stick ball was amazing, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's why. I mean, see, we used to, they used to put garbage out here. Uh, not garbage. Uh, the, the wooden boxes. And we used to steal them and then make scooters. Yeah, scooter, right, and scooters. jumping on the back of the bus. And jumping on the back of the but bus. But also, I'm just trying to think, like, in your head, it's the first day of shooting. Right. Now, you know, you've done the play, you met De Niro, you've sat at all these yeah. meetings, but here it is, the first day of shooting, you're looking at your old block, and you're in a movie with De Niro, yes. nobody's bigger, he's directing, right. you're playing the guy. He's playing my father, my life. Yes. Were you like, I can't think about this, because if I think about this, I'll just run, and I'll never stop running. No, I was okay. I you was were? okay. The only time I, the only time I got like really flustered, was when before the movie even started, he said, "You know what? Do me a favor, Chad. Come to the, come to the apartment. Let's just talk over the scenes." And I said, "Okay." So I went to his apartment, and this was like early, early on. I, I the first time I went to his apartment. Was he living in a studio, or something like that? Yeah. In, in, uh, One bedroom. No, no I'm, I'm kidding. Was, uh, the monster. He owned the building in Tribeca. So I walk up there and I. I sit with him, he goes, why don't you and I just read the scenes together? Me and the scenes between Sonny and... I said, yeah, okay. So he goes, no, no acting, let's just read it. I said, fine. And we're reading, we're going back and forth. Mm -hmm. And he goes, oh, they sound good. He goes, all right, you know what? Come tomorrow, we'll, uh, we'll go over everything again. I said, all right, Bob, thanks. I left. So I hit the elevator, and I'm going down, and I just went, oh, what the fuck did I just... And then it hit me. In the elevator, I went, I just did this scenes with Robert De Niro of my movie. It was weird. That it hit me there. That's interesting. But on the set, it wasn't like that. On yeah. the set, it wasn't like that. Because I go back I, to his Bob and knocked on the door and said, I didn't really like what you did with the father. My father wouldn't do that, Bob. Sit back. <laughs> I would down. never do that. Let me read it for you and show no, you how he, he actually, would. He flew my father up from uh, Florida, oh, and he wanted to hang out with him for like a month. Yeah. And my father taught him how to drive a bus. That's, he's amazing like that, huh? Yeah. And, and he did all these things that my father does. If you see him walk with the changer over here. And I said, holy shit, he copied my father to a T. Amazing, right? And I said, Bob, you know, nobody knows my father. They don't know what he looks like. Why'd you? He goes, because it's very specific. Though. It's a miser technique. Believe me, I know yeah. it. I studied a little myself. Yeah. Same technique. Um, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> I wish Bob was here right now. I'd put on a display for him. And by the way, you should be you should be on it because if you watched my show, which you didn't, you were asking about. But um, what are you late already? You're no, I'm trying to know what um, this is. Oh, this the, the, the pocket watch I got. This, I, this I, I didn't know morning. what it, I didn't know what it was. No, good. you know what I mean. First of all, you're lucky we don't. I don't make you guys go to Kingsbridge. The West Bronx is the Irish part. Back in the old days, oh, in we're here in the. This is not the home Bronx. There's Kingsbridge Road. No, Inwood, Inwood, Inwood. That's the Irish. Inwood, part. but that's Inwood. Manhattan. But yeah. But right over there, yeah. take a quick walk. I used to work on uh, Fordham Road in 198th back in the right. day. Boring story, I'll, I'll spare you, but I had a girlfriend on Valentine Avenue, and um, this is in the 80s. I spent a lot of time with her in the 80s. The 80s was, but you were in LA for some of the 80s, right? I didn't go to LA, I didn't go to LA till 86. I'll tell you what else is exciting to me. The fact that you were a great singer, uh, are a great singer. Well, thanks. I mean, you were saying doo-wop? Yeah, I was singing doo-wop yeah, on the corner. Yeah, yeah, I heard that story. It's amazing. Yeah. The, re the way I started in really singing in clubs, Yeah. I was singing on the corner, and this, the, the, the wise guy's name was Little Jojo. I'll never forget his name. He was a really nice guy. Small guy, but a tough guy. Yeah. And he walked over to me, and he goes, hey, kid, you sound pretty good. You want to go sing with the band? And you're with a bunch of other guys at the yeah. moment. But I was, I was the least you singer. Were the singer yeah. And he goes, I said, I, I said, I don't know. He goes, I said, where am I going to sit? He goes, inside. It was the office lounge on Tremont Avenue. We walk over to the, we walk in there, and there was a band called The Wanted, very famous band in New York. The Wanted? People know, they don't know. Uh, great group. And he went over like this. Like a rock band or? They were like 
Yeah, a rock band. And he went like this to the guy. Uh, it's Tommy. He goes, Tommy. he goes, hey. And the guy puts his head down. He goes, yeah. And little JoJo goes, the kid, he, he's gonna, I like this kid. He wants to sing. He's going to sing a song with the band. And the guy goes, sir, I'm really sorry. That's not very professional. And he puts his head back up. And the stage was high. And all of a sudden, JoJo goes. <laughs> and he puts his head down. And he goes, the kid sings with the band, or the whole fucking band ends up in the street. And he goes, what key? And I, and I sang. And did you know what a key was at the yeah. time? No, he goes, what key? And I said, I don't know. I said, yeah. he goes, what song you want to do? I said, wait till the midnight hour. He goes, all right, we'll do it. Wow. And I sang, wait till the midnight hour. And then I would go back each week because the club, the owner of the club said, hey, I like the way you sing. So each week I would go back and he paid me $25 for a few songs. And then a group saw me and said, hey, we need a lead singer. Want to sing with us? And that's how it started. Who saw you? A group that needed oh, a lead singer. They happened to be there? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then you went on the road and you were singer. That's how I became singer. Isn't that wild? I know. I mean, that's a, another wild part of your life. Fuck another wise guy. Any of this, you were like a. Yeah. Oh, it's always a wise guy who had like a, a say. In I had it. something in your life as well, around here, life, of course. Right? You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. You know? I know it was kind of weird, man. Yeah. I mean, I. You can, I can feel the eyes watching us now. Um. <laughs> and the black socks. All right, should we walk around the corner and see? Yeah. Whatever that you want to do, baby. Yeah. See this Madonna's bread. Been here 102 years. Best bread in the, in the world. Wow. Madonna's. If you come here, you go to Madonna's. I'll go. I like bread plain. Yeah, where, where are you from, Italy? Milan. Milan, okay. Go ahead, take a picture. Go ahead, hurry up. Exactly, okay, <laughs> skulking around. I mean, I don't think people... Thank you. How you doing? See, I'm big with the Irish. The Irish people know me. How you doing? How you doing? Jesus Christ, like a rock. What's that? Just a, a, a walking tour. How you doing? You Irish? Italian. You're Italian? Polar. All right. And you recognize Colin before me. Look yeah, at that. No, your name, no, no, I'm saying, look at that. It's about time. Colin you know, Quinn. Has, in my own neighborhood, they recognize him. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, the, um, that's the other thing. I, I would say, oh, sorry. Look at this place. Has this been here a long yeah. time? Oh, my God. Yeah. All these places yeah. are like third, fourth generation. Yeah. How are you, guys? Oh, thank you. Thank you. So you're walking down here, your oh, kid. Oh, you probably walked it. You probably walked in this block probably a thousand times. Thousand. Oh my before God. you were 15, right? Yes. Title Brothers. And what was it? Greatest Tidal place. Brothers. Now where was like, there was probably like three candy stores on this block, right? Oh yeah. At least. Yeah. And one of the candy stores was the little kid candy store. And the other two were the adult candy store. You know what? There was a lot, Colin. They're still that we're still here now. Was the social clubs? Right. You know, right. They, they paint the windows. Sure. It says members only. Like, how? I mean, the most amazing thing is that this is still very Italian here. Yeah, it is. These two streets. It is. These two streets. Still, well, Italians don't like to move. They're they're ready to go. You know, they're they're not going to move. No. See this place? Yeah. This diner has been here forever. Oh, it has. My, I had a guy named Fast Eddie. Fast Eddie, they call him Fast Eddie because everything was fast. And I'll do it's a quick story. Fast Eddie, we used to go in when we were kids. Eddie was older. So Eddie, we were, Eddie was about 20. I was 19 and, and the guy said to Eddie, listen Eddie, I, I'm going on vacation for two weeks. You're here every day, you know everything. Could you run the store for me? Could you just run? Eddie goes, okay. The guy leaves, he ends up being there for three weeks. Eddie sells the store. <laughs> Ready? He sells it to this guy, Willie. Oh my God. Listen, in three weeks, he sells it. Willie, two days before the guy comes back, finds out Eddie fucking sniffed him. Willie sells it to his brother. <laughs> you, you can't make that shit up. No. You can't. And then the guy comes back. He goes, Who the fuck are you? He goes, I bought the store. <laughs> he goes, Who are you? So what happened? That was the end of it? No, no. They had to get it. You know, he got arrested. They put him out. They all got, they all went, uh, they all went away. That's crazy. Guys, I'm a good friend of uh, Tara, uh, Tara, a good friend of mine. Oh, Tara's the best. Yeah, sure, I love him. I love you too. Tara kind of Tracy. Yeah, I no, Tara, I, I messed up. Kind of Stacy. Kind of Stacy, yes. Kind of Strachy. Kind of Strachy. Hey, I got to tell you guys, yeah. come on. Tara, I messed the name up again. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Here it is. Here it is. So, 187th Street. So here you are, let's say 19, I don't know, let's say 65. 65, okay. Right? You're walking down this block. Yeah. I've stopped here. This. You have slick back hair? Oh. Now, did you, 
Now, yeah. your father was a boxing trainer. My father was a bus driver, but he was also a, a real professional, a professional boxing trainer, yes. Yeah, and that's interesting, especially because boxing at that time. Yes. And you, I could tell, even the way you threw the punch on that corner in the movie, you go like this, just one scene, you yeah, just went like yeah, this. Yeah. I was like, oh, this guy's a real, he knows how to box, you know what I mean? Oh, I know how to box very nice, well. That was a nice body shot. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> My father always said, he got to throw that left hook to the body. <laughs> to the liver. The liver, I man. That left hook to the liver, that stops everybody. And when you... When you were uh, when you're hanging on the block, is it those guys like Sonny and them, or is it a whole new crew by then? Because you no, said that was the, the social club on yes. your club, but this, yes. how many social clubs, and how many guys like that are? Oh my God! And they have their own little power. every corner, every corner. Isn't that crazy? Oh. And that was the church, huh? That was the church, Mount Carmel Church. Yep. And we hear the bells. Oh my God! Do you hear that? Yeah. And how? By the way. That music, those bells, yeah. and that music, yeah. the Streets of the Bronx, all that yeah. stuff, I mean, that was the most beautiful Yeah, I used to, the music in that movie. And when I told, yeah. That so was, beautiful. We really, Bob, Bob and I really worked hard on Jesus. picking the right songs. Bob is great, man. You guys really did something yeah. that was, for anybody that was from New York at that time, it yeah. really was like. The, the intensity. It was sanctified, was uh, that? Me and Bob worked so hard on the fucking music. Yeah, but the music was incredible. Yeah, it was. And on the streets of the Bronx, that do up Bronx. thing at the beginning, who did that? Another uh, massive uh, piece. You, you've had, look, you've had Bogatti raviolis, right? What's that? Colin, you, you never had Bogatti raviolis? Um, I'm gonna have to get you some before we leave. I'm getting you some. Well, I'm not gonna cook them. Yeah, you won't cook? I'll make my wife cook them. Yeah, um, yeah. She'll do it. You're going to no, call me up Bogatti, and go, Raviolis. you never had Bogatti? No. Oh, my God. You got to have it. And uh, what was this place? <sighs> Shit, I don't remember what this place was. Yeah, I wonder, right? I don't know. It was probably like, it was probably like the, uh, the locksmith. Yeah. Remember, there was always like a locksmith. Yeah. Or oh, what about this? A television repair. You go to the television repair shop. Yeah. Remember, there was that like 500 yeah. little... And the guy would like be so handy with everything. I was like, how could they do it? It looked like a computer terminal to me. I was like, how could they do this? Exactly. It would fix everything. Exactly. Holy you know? shit. Here's the other thing. So you got this group of friends. Like, where do you guys hang out? Oh my God, is this it? The, the soup is over there oh. on that corner. So you, you got this group of friends. I'm saying you're like 15 years old, 16, right? Yes. And like, who's the good looking one? Who's the toughest one? Who's the funny one that breaks balls all the time? Babe, yeah. Babes was the toughest one. What's his name? Babes. Babes. Come on. Come on. Prezioso. Babes. Yeah, Babes was the toughest one. Yeah. Babes was... Just ready to Babes go. Babes could have been a professional fighter. Yeah. I mean, he was one of those. He was party. like, knock yeah. you out with either hand, and, but, he, but he loved to fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he's one of those who yeah. loved to fight. Yeah, you go, to, you go out for a night, and they're like, hey, there's a lot of girls around. And somehow this guy would rather be, he's like, he wants to be in a fight. Yeah, he was, the, he was, I would say, uh, I was the, the, I was probably the, I was the guy with the mouthpiece with the girls. Oh, yeah, yeah. So they would send me in first. <laughs> they would send me in first, you know. And, uh, That's great. And we were, I got to, and Timmy Knapp was the funny one. My friend Timmy Knapp, he was the. Sure, the Irish guy, I get it. No, Nablitano. Oh. I thought you said, I thought you said Timmy Mac. No, my nap. hearing's gone. Nap. Nap, Timmy Nap. Now this is my building. That's it, huh? I lived on the fifth floor, right wow. there. Wow. Now we see where that screen is? Yeah. That's that, that was my, that was my, I would come Have you ever there. gone up there and talked to them? You know what's funny? I went up there maybe 10 years ago. I walked up there and the place was empty. They were going to rent it. So I was able to walk in. Wow. And that I walked so in cool. with my son, Dante. Remember when we walked in there? Yep. Do you remember that? That must have blown. How old were you? You were 14. And he walked in there and he goes, Dad, you guys lived here? It was like five people in this apartment that was so, 400 square feet. Right up there, 400 square feet. Yes. That's amazing. Yeah, five people. Yeah. My mother and father pulled out, they had the uh, bed that's, that you pulled out. Wow. And uh, this was the drugstore here. This was? This was the drugstore, Lizzie's drugstore, right here. Sure, and yeah. this is the stoop where I was. They had all kinds of harnesses and everything else. And here's where I was sitting. Wow. And there's where the guy killed him, right over there. Wow. Right there, huh? 
My hand to God, right? There it is, his crescent hand on oh God. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. This is a, this is some view, yeah, this is crazy. And yeah. it was all right there, and you're just a little kid, and it just. I was just a little kid. And this is when my father ran down, grabbed my fucking hand, and dra dragged me right up steps. By the way, how good were the cops in that movie, in the scene? Where the guy's like, yeah. Those are yeah. two cops. Those are real cops. They seem like they're real. Yeah, they were real <laughs> cops. That was my best friend, Phil Folia. I love you, Phil. God rest his soul. His father, Phil Folia Sr., yeah. was a detective. And uh, he was he was in that scene. They, you, you could tell they were definitely. They were real cops. They had that voice. And they, yeah. <laughs> Hey, come on, easy. sorry, sorry, just come with it, yeah. Yeah, and he goes, we didn't see anything. He goes, yeah, yeah, I know all about it. Yeah, I know all about it. He goes, he goes, we didn't pick your name out of a hat. <laughs> that was, that, that actually was his line. But that's the great, <laughs> that was his line. That's great, is the movie had all these little lines like yeah. that oh. that aren't necessarily, they're funny because they're so real. Yeah. Specific. They're so real and yeah. specific. He goes, come on, we know the kid's sorry. We didn't pick your name out of a hat. He goes, Chaz, do if I say this? I said, I love it. That's great. That was his line. And the lineup scene was beautiful. That was like, that was a little mini movie itself, just the yeah. lineup. Now, what really, no, and I always tell people this, when I went upstairs, <clears throat> there was never a lineup. My right. father never let me go he down. Go down right? of course. He said, no, he's not going down. He's not, he didn't see anything. He's Smart. not going. Yeah. And that's it. So, but when I was the next day, when I was here, when Sonny walked by, and he was over there, they used to hang on, a lot of them hang, hang over, and he would look at me and go, wow. Just like, I know that you know that I know. Wow. And that's how it started. That's crazy. Yeah, see, that's how it started. But but the lineup I did because I wanted, I thought it would be cinematically, it'd be good. It was beautiful. Yeah. It was beautiful, yeah. and I got to see all those guys yeah. without yelling. And you meet suddenly all they're them. all silent. Right, right. You see them before, they're all like animated, right. and suddenly it's just dead quiet. Yeah, and then when it comes to me, uh, the music stops, and and then yes. Bob said, what, what, we, "Let's add the bells." And he, and he boom. The music in that movie is unbelievable. Boom. That was amazing. Yeah. So, yeah. No, he really he did a, he did an amazing job. You know, he. It, I, I you guys put it. together a masterpiece. He it, he did a, it was a masterpiece what he did. You know, I mean. Definitely. And it was just at that time where people were like, "Oh, these." New York mob, but we've seen too many, and that one just people were like, "Oh no, we have." Because it's really, a, it's like it. a family movie. That's it's, right, and that's why it's been around so long. You know Got what the I mean? Theme, you know, yeah. which is wasted yeah. talent. There wasted also. talent. And the other thing, yeah. And how about just the fact that he's like, you meet three great girls. Everybody, everybody, we all believe that after you see the movie, like, oh, okay, you have three great. Well, think about it, Colin. You're, you're married. How many years now? Oh, I don't know, a few. Yeah. Okay. How many times have you really fell in love in your whole life? Um, twice maybe three. No, more than that. Really? Yeah. You broke you broke the mold. <laughs> you broke the fucking mold. Usually it's three times. Did you have more than three great ones? <laughs> you son of a bitch. Colin Quinn has busted the theory. Yeah. <laughs> but I still love the theory. Yes. You know yeah. what I mean? I always think three times. That's about it, man. It's got it's got like it. Yeah. There's a lot of that stuff that that Sunny character. Was he a compilation of people or one guy? He was, like, well, what, he, was more, he was more than one guy. He was like two guys that I put, yeah. But I mean, all the stuff yeah. you did with that guy. What I loved, too, was you didn't, you didn't soften him in the sense that he was contemptuous. Like, you, this, the smirk you gave when De Niro, as your father, goes, my son makes more money than me. That smirk you gave yeah. was real. Yes. Well, oh, was yeah. that good? Yeah, because I offered you a job and you didn't want yeah. to do it. You looked at him like... Ha ha, like it's funny. Yeah. Instead of feeling like, yeah. oh, I feel bad, the guy's yeah. son makes more. Exactly. That was great. Now, now you gotta think of this, this is the 60s, and yeah. they offered my father $150 a week. That was a lot of money. That's a lot of money. That was a lot, and my father wouldn't do it. And, and he said because, he said, I'm afraid, you know, if I get pinched, I lose my, my, my yeah. job, I lose everything. And my mother was going, ah, yeah, 150. By the way, that was great. <laughs> Catherine is the mother. Oh, yeah, yeah, right? that was a great scene, too. Let's You're on the fire escape. Let's not make any rash decisions. <laughs> on the fire escape. I mean, right. that was amazing, too. Yeah. Well, my dad. Well, well, she's my like, wow. He goes, what? You think I should? No, I don't know. My mother was always like, well. <laughs> I mean, that was brilliant, too. Ah, come on. And my dad, and here's the thing. My dad retired at 65, and he, he collected his pension until he was 90 years old. Wow. So, so it was the right game? 25 years he collected his pension. That's amazing. 
Okay, so. Well, that would have been double his salary probably in those yeah, days. 150 a week. What? No question, double his salary. Yeah. yeah. No question. Six thousand a year. Eight thousand. Yeah. Right? That's it. Yeah. That's a lot of money, cash. Of and all he had to do was, when the bus stops here, they would have, they would have handed him a piece of paper, right. and when he went down to the end, he would hand it to the other guy. That's all he had to do. Now let me ask you this. Yeah. Did you smoke cigarettes when you were a teenager? I never smoked. No. Never, huh? Never. Because everybody else is just smoke, you flick it in the street. The whole never. Way. I never smoked. That's interesting. No. Why was that? I don't know. I just it was always at the so help. There was always one guy that didn't smoke. Everybody else smoked. We no, all not, smoked. No, no. There was always one guy that didn't smoke. No, there was a bunch of guys who didn't smoke. Some did. Yes. A bunch did. A bunch didn't. Now, did you have any legendary kid that the older guys would pay to play stickball against other streets? Because we always had one guy. That was even when he was a kid, he was a prodigy at stickball. Yes. Well, we had a prodigy at pool. At pool? At pool. Wow. Yeah, Joe BBI's. Joe BBI. Joe BBI's was the best pool player in the neighborhood. Wow. And they'd hold it. And he was really great. Even as a kid, yeah. Yeah, he was great. Yeah. yeah. He was legitimately a great pool player. Now I don't see any places to play stoop ball or off the point. We used to play off the point around the corner. Oh, okay. When we go there, I'll show you. All right. Yeah. 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 I should have brought a Spaldine. I'll oh. show you my technique. My sliding technique. Really? No. <laughs> but I played. I was mediocre at everything, but that doesn't matter. That's why I became a comedian. I was yeah. average at sports. No, but I, I know we did this uh, on my podcast, but when did you when did you start being like uh, funny that you said I want to be a comedian? On the st well, because in school, I went to school like you. Everybody, we all went to schools, public school, black, Puerto Rican, Italian, Irish, Jew, Jew, everybody. And I would just sit in class and say things. And everybody started laughing. And I was like, this feels So you were the class clown. I was the class clown. Right. Yeah. Disrupted. Yeah. Teachers hated me. The kids loved me. Me too. Same thing. Hated me. Yep. Hated me. And that's when I became, but I didn't do it until years later because I was too scared to be a comedian, you know. But yeah. I did I was so scared of the idea of it. Right. But I was in front of people all the time on the block, right. always known as funny. Do you think it takes like ten years for a then. comedian to really be funny? I like was funnier then than I am now. And everybody knows it. Everybody I grew up with says you peaked at thirteen. And they were all right. No, it was No, it's true. It's the truth. Yeah. Do I think it takes 10 years to be a comedian? At least. At least. At least. To get back to your self. Right. Like when you talk about acting, it's like to not force yourself to try to be. Just to, Like when you're playing Sonny, if you're an, an amateur, though, you'd be like, Sonny. And you're right. just, you're just no longer Sonny. Yeah. Whatever, he, right, whatever right. you bring to it. Yeah. And that's the same thing with comedy, which is you. The, if you're trying to get the audience, you're dead. You're dead. You know? You have to be relaxed because you're like, this is all I have. Yeah, I remember. I can't bring I, it anymore. I remember Chris Rock telling me that. He says, the big thing in comedy and stand up is not to be afraid of the silence. Oh, yeah. No, and he's a perfect example of that. He'll, so just, he'll go up there and work his stuff out. That's the way you sit there, and if it doesn't work, you just smile yeah. and just keep on going. Just keep working it, yeah. Now, I have a question. What role did the stoop play in old school? Oh my God! It was, it was everything. I mean, this, all these stoops would be like, wait. It was the hangout. It was the old lady. It was the review. It was like, right. It had a thousand and one uses. And in the winter time, we would just hang inside because right. of the heat. We would all hang in there. Play cards in the hallway. Play cards in the hallway. But um, yeah. And the thing about the stoop and the window was when you try to go to the store, there was always one old lady. Hey, get me! They make you get them <laughs> stuff and drop a quarter down, <laughs> and they're like, oh. but they give you a little tip to do. Sometimes, it. Mike, because we lived on the fifth floor, we would do the basket. The yeah, basket. yes. We do the basket, throw yeah. something in, then the, ba then the basket. They wheel the basket down with their money for yeah, their yeah, food. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, we used to do that, man. That's great. That yeah, I mean, it's a, when you think about it, it's a whole environmental thing. Like you're saying about the, yeah. uh, the stoop, it's an environment. So when a, a nice night, let's say, in the 60s. Oh, everybody's sitting out here. They're all sitting with the beach chairs. and it's yes, like the beach chairs. Community, right? That's right. But it's like those days, like even when you're making the movie, those days were kind of over. Yeah. But I remember living in L.A. and just being like, oh, yeah, that's like a vibe you'll never have. You'll never have. The folding chairs. Yeah. And this was the feast. The feast was right here. And the big thing right there was... The guy was standing right on that corner with a big thing of balloons. And I was from my window, me and my friends, I had a BB gun. And we go, poof. And the guy would go, and he'd look around and say, what the hell? Then we go, poof. And he'd be going like that. And we opened up the window just this much. And we had the BB gun. We shoot down and oh. then, my, then my father saw him. He goes, get the Right, right. What are you doing? 
but it is it is interesting but i feel like there's something with everybody being outside all the time yes. that created a personality that it's that doesn't really exist anymore no you know you're what right I mean? you're so right which is just like a a, a shorthand of emotion a yeah. shorthand of sarcasm that was at that particular time that doesn't exist now colin do you realize the things that people said to each other? I mean, yeah. it's like back then, now it's like everybody's triggered. You can't say nothing. Back then it was like of a person, you know, did yeah. you did you, sh did you shower? Right, right. You stink. Right. You know, people would say anything to each other. Yeah. And everyone, well, the nicknames alone, like you said, that's, yeah. uh, everybody's nickname was Ears. Ears. Anyway, no. guy, ear. <laughs> Coffee cake. Oh, that guy. And that was, so was that? The real guy was the other guy, the, the gambler, right? Mush, the real guy the was real Eddie guy. Mush, yeah. Frankie and Coffee he Cake, he died. Been blown away. What? That guy must have been blown away right. to be in that movie. He is. He used to say to me every day after that movie, you made me famous. You made me famous. I love you. And on his tombstone, it says, Eddie Mush Montanero, the My original movie. Bronx Tale. And did he continue gambling uh, after even during the movie? He was still losing all his money? Oh, yeah. It's whole life. Stop, right? The bookmakers. Would not take his bet. No bookmaker in the whole neighborhood. Now you would say, why? He loses, right? The reason why they wouldn't take his bet, because the, all the wise guys would wait and see who he bet. And then they go the other way. So the bookmaker said, you fuck, you're costing me a lot of money. I can't oh do this. Oh my God. There's the church. Uh, he died and we, he was, and we passed by the church, I'll show you. Yeah. When they carried the hearse out, they carried the hearse out, Colin. They, they go to put it into the, into the, uh, the casket out. When you go put it into the hearse, hearse had a flat. They had to take the they had to take the casket out and get another hearse to come to replace it. Oh, and everybody, the whole street was laughing, and they're all going, Eddie, Eddie. <laughs> and where did he live around here? Eddie Bush lived over here. Yeah. Tell the story about De Niro. What? Eddie Bush and De Niro. Oh, that was real. Oh, that was on that corner right there. I said, he goes, Chaz, I can't find, we couldn't get anybody to play Eddie Mush. He goes, where's the real guy? I go, I don't know, Bob, he, the, guy's, the real guy's about 65 years old. I said, he lives up in, um, uh, in Navy. He goes, let's go see him. I said, okay, so we get in the car, we drive up here, and I figured he'd be, he'd be by the bookmaker over there. So the shirt and shit, he's right over there. So I get out of the car and I walk over, I go, Eddie, Bob's in the limo. You know, I go, Eddie, come over to the car, Bob De Niro's in the car. He goes, get the fuck out of here. I'm not walking over to no car. I, I owe too many people money. I go, Eddie, come on. I go, I, I, I go, you know, he goes, yeah, I heard they're doing a movie. I go, Bob De Niro wants to meet you. He walks over, taps on the window, the window goes down, De Niro goes, how you doing, Eddie? Mush goes, holy shit, it's you, fucking Robert De Niro. So now this is Robert De Niro telling you this. Bob says to him, listen, Eddie, I want you to come to my office on Monday. He goes, do me a favor. You're just going to read about three pages. Could you be there at 12? Now you would say, of course, right? He goes like this, 12. <laughs> he goes, can I come at three? So Bob goes, okay, I'll make it work at three. He goes, but I'm just, I'm just curious, Eddie. What's so important at 12? He goes, I got to make the daily double at Aqueduct. Yeah, I was going to say. And he goes, come at three. And we get in the car, Bob uh, goes, Chaz, come on. That's the guy. Yeah. It's... That's the uh. guy. Yeah. That's the guy. That was it. But he's got to be there, too. I like that he had to go to Aqueduct, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he could just... You know, he had to go. He had to go to Aqueduct for the yeah. Daily Double. Oh, my God. That was his ritual. Yeah. And he could not break his ritual. Jeez, I must have chicken two hours to get there from here. Nah, not that much. Uh, yeah. Aqueduct? Yeah, probably uh, an hour. Yeah. 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 But uh, yeah. that's so fun. That's a great... That's a great... I work... This place... See this place here? This was a... This was a, a travel uh, a travel agency. Right. My father and mother walking in to go. My, I was 13. My son don't even know this story. I was 13 years old, 13, 14, and, they, and they said to him, "You think we could you could use my son for a job in the summertime? You know, right? Now, this is the store. I live here. I was late every fucking day. Oh, no. I was late every day to finally they told my mother, father, look, the kid don't." I remember the word he used. He has no initiative. <laughs> and my father said, you have no initiative. Yes. I said, what's initiative? <laughs> they fired me. Oh my God, yeah. This was the place, here was I. Yeah, here. 
I had to walk out the Everyone, door and walk in. It's every adult's dream right. would be to go to work like this. I got fired. Kids like, ah, I'll come here late. You know, my son said a very brilliant thing. He said, Dad, you're the only kid who grew up poor who spoiled. <laughs> he goes, I've never seen that before. Ah, that's a brilliant line. Is that a brilliant line? That's a brilliant line. Don't they? What? That's really funny. Spoiled. Grow up poor and spoil. That, yeah. That's a group. Usually, usually you're one or the other. He said, Dad, you pulled it off. Yeah. Yeah, you were, they used to go, royalty. Royalty. You know what I mean? They'd be like, oh. I was the boy, we the son. We were talking about that with the neighborhood, yeah. you know, neighborhood uh, famous yeah. people like yeah. Eddie Moshe and royalty. That guy's royalty, yeah. yeah. And how about the kid that was, uh, it's a perfect street for, um, you know, for the kid that owed you money. Remember? When he's running across. Oh, yeah. It's a perfect yeah. street for somebody to yeah. duck somebody. Yeah. There's like three blocks you can go, all right, go this way, that way, that yeah. way. Yeah. Right. And I got to say, Dante, that was a brilliant uh, deduction. Yeah, it was. I've never seen anybody grow up poor and spoiled. That's, that was a great line. I mean, that could be in a movie. Yeah. That, could be, that would be a character in a movie. It's perfect. Yeah. It's actually perfect. Eddie, the, yeah, this was Eddie the Jew. We called him Eddie the Jew because obviously he was the only one of the only Jewish guys. This was the candy store. We would all go in. This was the candy store, huh? And have eight creams and, and all kinds of stuff. And is this where you guys would hang out as kids? We would hang out here a lot, but then he'd get tired of us and throw us out. He did? Yeah, and then we'd go around the corner. We'd go to Butcher's Deli and hang out there. And we used to say things. Uh, Fast Eddie would walk in and go to Butchie. Hey, Butchie, why don't you get like one of those sun, a sun lamp so we could do... But she goes, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> get the fuck out of here. You know? It is funny how even the stores change. You know what I mean? Yeah. From those years. It was all either a candy store, a little. Now, this is this is Belmont right here. And here's yeah. see, and there's the and there's the we used to do this right off here. Now this is oh. This was the point right here. Oh. Off the stoop. And God, how do you play off the point here? It's, this is ridiculous. We would do right there. No, that's, this is ridiculous. What's the matter? What is the matter? You need to stoop off the point. You gotta, this. You know yeah, I mean? we would do it right there. So what's off the point? The game. We would do it here, off here. This is absurd. I can't even believe. And then we play King, absurd. did you play King Queen? Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, no, uh, uh, with the change? Yes. We used to throw the pennies the here, and the pennies, nickels, yeah. pitch pennies yeah. right here. And box ball, you ever play box ball? Box ball, we would play box ball here. Too. And curve ball. Curve ball. Yep. Yeah, yep. but I can't believe. Hey, remember I told you, this is where one of the kids was. I used to fight all the time. Jimmy Scanlon. Fight him here. Jimmy Scanlon lived here. We used to fight every. We had to fight every day for seven days. Wow. Finally, we found an Irish guy. Scanlon. Finally, Babes told us, "All right, you both got to stop because I'm going to fight both of you." So we stopped. <laughs> like, okay. And we stopped. I can't believe. Now look, this is probably a sore point with you, but weren't you going to make a movie about Dion? Yes. There's one Belmont Avenue. I wrote a script about Dion. Yeah, yeah. it was a great script. I but we never got made. It never got made. Never got made. Because you not only were you a, you were a singer, you sang doo up. You yeah, guys sing on this corner. Dion was like 10 years older than me. 10, yeah. 11, 12 years older than yeah. me. Yeah. We would sing here. Sing on this corner. Yeah. 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 Total cycle. The, um, oh. the, uh, so you guys, would you sing on this corner? Yeah, we sing here. We would, we would try to sing in like in the hallways because of the echo. Oh yeah, you know. Yeah, we would sing here, on the hallways. Um, but see this over here, this here. <clears throat> Colin, this was a, this was a th there was no fence here. This was an open open lot. Right. It was all dirt, and everybody in the neighborhood, <clears throat> in Christmas time. They would get their old Christmas trees and dump them here. Oh. And, and it was like really, really high. So what we did was we dug underneath the Christmas tree. We put boards, plywood, and, and we dug a hole, then put plywood, then put the Christmas trees on top. We thought it would make a nice fort. So we were, we were, we were fight. We, then we played cowboys and Indians, and, and we were the cowboys, and we went underneath the boards. So the guys who were playing the Indians get a bright fucking idea. They set the fucking Christmas trees on fire. Oh, no. We could have been burned alive. Yes. All of a sudden, we smelled smoke and we fucking ran out. We could have killed us. Oh, my God. 
You imagine? You could almost see like the. It was a big fucking bonfire. In Jesus here. Christ! Yeah. Fucking crazy. Yeah, because people always burn their Christmas tree. It's a miracle that I'm still. They tried here. to kill all of you. It's a miracle that I'm still here. But they didn't mean to. They didn't think they were going to kill us. They just no. thought, hey, babe, hey, let's set it on fire. No, of course. You know. Now, where was like, where did you guys box? Like, was it CYO, PAL? Arthur Avenue. There was a Charlie Crusader's gym over there. There was a gym there? A gym there, yeah. Now, here's was our club. We had a club over here called the Laurel Club. Oh, that was it? It was underneath there. We had a, that was a social club. It's not there no more. Wow. That's crazy, huh? Crazy, man. And what was that? That was that was the, the that, that church has been there forever, man. It has. Yeah. Well, what the hell? I don't understand. That church has been there. Forever. But it's not Catholic. Yeah. We here's where we we would play stickball on these streets, right? On these right here. Yeah. yeah this okay. makes sense. And if you could hit three sewers, that was great. Oh yeah. Three sewers was. The I one. know, of course, everywhere. Big time. Now some guys would actually hit from here. From here. We would try to, some guys would actually hit from here on top of that roof, all the way in the, that roof, all the way down there, the brown one. On the right? On the right. It was a home run. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. Even that little roof should be a home run. This was like great. Oh God, did I just get a, did I just get a flashback? Woo! I just got a flashback from looking here? Yeah. Holy shit. Wow, that was scary. Now you guys didn't play, you didn't play pitching, right? No. We didn't play pitching either, you had to do it yourself. You had to do it yourself. Yeah. What we did here, Dante, remember when I told you the story about the dummy? Yeah. We got a dummy from Sears, and we, and we dressed it up, put a hat on it, right? And we put like eight bottles of ketchup in the limbs and here and the thighs. And when that, this church came out, we threw it off that building. Oh my God! And I screamed, ah! and the thing went, fuck! And all the ketchup went, whoosh! and people were like, fucking throwing up. It was insane. Oh my God! And I still want to know who went to the church. It's not a Catholic church. Oh, it's a, it's how about this, Jazz? What? You you go play street football. You go between the cars like this. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> A down and out. Down and out. Down and out behind the car. There was always one guy who was bad. You would say to him, go long. Go long. <laughs> yeah. What should I do? He go, what should I do? And he'd be like this. Go long. He'd be out there like go this, long. like thinking he was open. Right. How you doing, man? Dante, remember I told you about when the guys, they, the, the older guys, they put me in a garbage can right here. I was here. I was here. They put me in a garbage can. They tied, what do you call it? They hog tied my hands and my. Wow. They put me in a garbage can and it was raining. And a car came down just like this and stopped. And he got out of the car and the guy walked over and they, they said, son, are you all right? And I just looked up and he picked me up out of the garbage can. Thank God. And I, and I was laughing like a fucking yeah. idiot. So you play skellies. Remember, you'd literally be on the ground for hours in filth playing skellies. I should have brought a skellies cap. Wow. Remember some guys are really good at making the skellies cap? Yes. Yeah. This was it right here, man. Yeah, Skelly's board, right there. Oh, now, if you want to see Butchie's Deli in the club where we were, sure. we were down to the next block. Watch out for that. Oh, Jesus. Wow. You know, it, it, it's, the, it's the friendships, the friends, the- Watch out for this. Every day coming out and hanging out together. And Watch out for this. They don't have that no more. They don't have, you know what I, you know what I say? It's like this. Colin, do you remember the guys you grew up with? Sure. Are you still friends with some of them? A couple of them, yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I, I think of it like this. I say, well, okay, yeah. What is the highest form of, of camaraderie, friendship? And that, is ba and that is war. You ever see guys that fought in war together? They're like friends for Oh, yeah. Right? Okay, so let's take it a step down. Friends that grew up in the street like this. Sure. Of course, it was, a, it was like you, you bled with them. You, you fought with them. So these guys you grew up with like that, you remember your whole life. Watch out for that. Um, yeah, and also I feel like I miss what I say, which is people's, the humor. The I humor. To, I went to LA oh. and I came back and this guy goes to me when I was, he said, hey, call me. And I didn't call him and I'd been in LA oh. for two years. 
and a New York guy, and then he saw me, and I passed him, I go, hey, what's up? And he goes, hey, thanks for calling me, being sarcastic, and it took me a minute, and I go, I just started laughing, I go, I forgot about that sense of humor. Yes. Where people go, hey, thank you, and they don't break. They don't break. And he's just busting your balls, but he's not yeah. saying, I'm busting your balls. No. He's just going, hey, thanks a lot. And he kept walking. And I left for an hour. Do you think, Colin, that growing up in New York in a street like this gave you your humor? Yeah, I mean, I think it definitely, like I said, that was the glory day for me, personally. It was the glory day. I really did peak when I was 13, 14. Yeah. Because you're out there all the time. There's all these different people. Yeah. Everybody, there's no, and you're just living off the moment. And every moment is, like you said, yeah. pulling some shit. So it was really, it was, I definitely think it helps you become, uh, you know. Because you, you have to admit, I, I mean, I was funny, but, yeah. but all my friends were funny. Yeah, everybody was funny. Everybody was funny. A lot, there was a lot of right, Am I right or wrong? Everybody was funny. So many funny guys. I, yeah, so you, I, you would take a piece of all of those guys. I always tell the, uh, one time the teacher yelled at us, I've told the story somewhere, but, this teacher yelled at us in class, and, goes, and we were really scared. We were like 13. She goes, nobody moves. The bell rang at 3 o'clock. Nobody moved. And I'm serious. And we we're like, really scared. And then this kid, Mark Williams, from another class, black kid in another class, walks in and points to this kid, Godfrey, in our class. And he goes, like, he's not supposed to be there, but the bell lights. Yeah. He goes, Godfrey, your father says leave the shoes on the back steps of the school. He's got to go to work. And shuts the door and leaves. Just busting his ball. But says it like it's a message he's delivering. Right. And even the teacher, who was not a numerous, right. was crying. I mean, that's funny. I mean, it's so funny. And he delivered it like this is a real yeah. man. He didn't yeah. wait around for the laugh. He yeah. just goes, God, for your father says, leave his shoes in the back of the school. He's got to go to work. Like the family has one pair of shoes. <laughs> you know, you're so poor, you know. Right, right. And he just shut the door and left. Left. And people, there was a moment of hesitation. Like that, he was just a funny guy. Mark Williams, I still remember. But that's him. what I mean. All these guys were so fucking funny. funny. Yeah, well, we used to have, we used to have like a, time. this was like a, a social club where we used to stay. Oh. You know in the movie, The Deuce is Wild? Yes. This was it. This was The wow. Deuce is Wild. And that was the grocery store right across the street. Wow. And um, we would hang out in the grocery store. This guy, Muzzy, walked in there once. He, he was a thief. And he walked in, he goes, hey, Butchie. And we're all standing in there. He goes, hey, but Butchie, he's called him Butchie Cans, because all the cans. He used to go, Butchie, uh, could you cash this check for me? We all went, oh, fuck. <laughs> right? So Butchie goes, I can't cash the check, Bush. He goes, please, it's, a, it's, a, it's from the government. It's a cash from the government. He goes, all right, give me the check. He hands it the fucking thing. And he looks at it, he goes, because it's like, you know, the, it comes with the check and then the receipt part. Right. He goes, he goes, he goes, Muzzy, this is the receipt part. He goes, Receipt check. What's the difference? <laughs> I'll never forget that. He goes, receipt uh, check. Just cash the fucking thing. And he goes, goes, get the fuck out of here. By the way, another great moment in uh, when you guys were doing the deuces thing was the guy. There's only the old Italian thing. This was right here, yeah. Saying like this, but with the hand like we this. Say, not like this. Yeah, not like this. Like there. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Medica, <laughs> And how great was that guy? That guy's test was hilarious too. Yes. Remember? Oh, the Mario that test. was good, yeah. The Mario yeah, test was yeah. funny. That's yeah. the kind of break, I mean, you know, you know, it's a masterpiece. That The play's a masterpiece and in the yeah. movie. Yeah. Oh, it's crazy. Man. No, it's really, it's crazy when you think about what it meant. But it just goes to show the old classic, my favorite line of all time. And yeah. In the specific is the universal. Is my boy. See that? Show that if you can. That's Phil Foley away. Oh. That's the that's the guy who's behind me and when I do my podcast. Phil Foley away. Greatest man I ever met, man. Next to my wow. dad, of course, yeah. Named the street after him. Phil that's Foley amazing. away. Great guy. Oh. On Belmont and 189, too. Yeah, right on Belmont. Yeah. Dante, you once asked me where the school was. It was right all the way down there. We would walk straight up here. And where'd you go to high school? Columbus? I went to Roosevelt. Roosevelt, so wait a minute. Theodore Roosevelt's up there too on Fordham Road. Uh, yeah. And did you go to that Paradise movie theater? Oh yeah, with all the lights, with all the stars. That's great, huh? Boy, they made movie theaters in those days, huh? Those were movie theaters. Crazy. And what was, your, what was the movie that most really impacted you where you were like? When I was young? Yeah. Oh, it was, it was on the waterfront. 
Oh, yeah, you were a little kid when they came out. Yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't. I, I saw it on TV, I remember. Okay. I saw it on, but I think when, when in the theater? Yeah. Around the world in 80, uh, around the world in 80 days. Oh. It was the first time I, I seen color. I think it was one of the first Technicolor movies. I was like, my and mother you, brought me there. And would you sit in the balcony or would you sit downstairs? I would sit downstairs, sometimes in the balcony. And did you guys go to dances? Like, do you go like? Yes, we went to Lady of Solace. Yeah. A Lady of Solace, Mont Carmel dances, a Lady of Solace. You know, 14, 15, 16, all the girls. All the other girls from other places you yeah. didn't know, from like, yeah. what, like Morris Park or what? Morris Park. That's wild, huh? Wild. And were you a good dancer? I was all right. And what they did, and those days they're doing like? The slop. And the stroll and all the this stroll. kind of thing. <laughs> what was great? You ever see The, the Wanderers? Great movie. Great, yeah. And they did that whole dance, remember? Yes. The girl's chewing gum, she's teaching. Tony Kalem, that was her name. Yeah. She was great in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's chewing gum going, all right, and she's leading them in the dance. Oh, let's stroll. Da, 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 da. Wow. Crazy, huh? Crazy fucking neighborhood, man, crazy. Well. You know what, you know what, Colin? It's, it's like, if you look at these old movies, it was like, a, a, that's why I love Bronx Tale, the movie, because it's a time capsule of what it was like back then. Because oh, that's going to be gone soon, all gone. That's what I'm saying. When I say in the specific is universal, that's William Goldman. That's what he said about writing, in the specific is universal. So you get this movie about this little block, yes. yet it resonates with people because it's everybody, even if they, if they didn't live it, they feel the emotion. Watch the shit. Yeah, you know, right? Yeah. Of the character, yeah. yeah. Dog shit. Remember, <laughs> I remember when the Pooper Scooper Law started. Remember, when we were growing up, there was no Pooper Scooper Law. There was shit all over the street. All over the street. <laughs> like it is now. Yeah. Like, do they follow the law here or what, yeah. these fucking people? But they would say, curb your dog. You, do, you, you shit in the street. Yes. That was it. Nobody shit on the sidewalk, but there was no Pooper Scooper. I remember. I mean, look at this. Pooper Scooper started in like 77. Oh, God. That's hilarious. But yeah, I feel like, uh, well, I feel like it all came together in that movie in this weird way and in the play, but I mean, so when you did the, so you're doing the movie, you're doing the play. Yeah. It's a hot play, and I remember even hearing about it, and so then they offer you all this stuff. It's like the Stallone story all over again. Yeah, yeah. They offer you all these big deals, but you got to go. But they right? don't want me. You don't no. get to play Sonny. No. I don't get to play Sonny, and I don't get to write this replay. And you have no money. No money. And so you're sitting there going, what am I going to do? And you just keep saying, and you, did your gut tell you, or you were just like, I just can't, I can't live with the idea of somebody else playing this part? Well, the, you know, people always go, because when I turned down the million dollars, yeah. actually, that was, a, that was nothing. It was the 250 that was the hardest offer. It was? Yeah, because that was the first offer, and that came out of nowhere. That was like 250000 for what I just wrote. Eighty nine, yeah. So that was the hard one. Then after I turned down that, then I did the 500, and it was easy for me. Was I didn't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, you already made the move. I already. And then De Niro shows up. De Niro shows up and sees it. And, and then when De Niro shows up, you know he's in the crowd that night? No, I didn't know he was there until I finished. And if you had known he was in the crowd, do you think it would affect, it would affect your performance? I, I don't think so. I just might have been a little bit more like, I'll show him what a fucking actor is. No, I just, I just would have probably said, just tell me where he's sitting so I don't catch. Look, yeah, don't catch his eye. Don't catch his eye. I don't want to catch his that eye. That was a small theater. Yeah, well, it was 300 seats. Oh, all right. That was a 300 seat theater, that one. You know. Yeah, but I'm, yeah. So you're there, and then he comes up to you afterwards. Yeah, he came in my dressing room and said, oh, look, I, I know what you're going through. And he just started. And, right he, and he said something very, he goes, look, if you end up selling it, they're going to come to me anyway. <laughs> so he did say that. That's great. Yeah. So he goes, why not? I know what you want. You want to, re i rather we control it. He goes, he goes, as far as I'm concerned, you can, you, you'll be great as Sonny and you should write it because it'll be honest. I remember him saying And that. did you say I want to direct it too? No, I never wanted to direct it. You didn't? No, never. I was smart enough to. But I mean, he was a great director, but what if you're getting a shitty director? They could have ruined that movie. I know, but I, I, I knew that would have been asking too much. And I knew, I didn't, I was, I didn't want to take that on. I, I knew writing it. Right. But that's why it meant a lot to me to get a director that was willing to. Oh my God, he was in all the way. Yeah. And I couldn't have had a better person like him because he really said, I want you there every day. 
Yeah, yeah. I, he even had me in the. It was amazing, and he really did it. Was he a first-time director? I think so. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, he was a first-time director, man. Do you think he's gonna say he was secretly pissed that he didn't direct it? I bet he. Was. No. I bet he was. No. <laughs> I want to. I want to go get some Bulgari raviolis. I'm buying you. I'm buying you a box. You got to take it home with you. Fine. Come on, because you're gonna call me up and say, "What the fuck was that?" Really? Your mother makes. Your your, your wife makes sauce. Does she make? I sauce? make sauce. Oh, come on, come on, let's go. Let's go. We're going. I'm getting you a box. She makes sauce too. She makes it. I have to say, she made sauce, so she'll get mad at me. Um, she's actually three quarters Italian. Hey, she's from Nutley, so you know, all the Italians. Is your wife Italian? Yeah, well, three quarters. Three quarters. But do you know how to make sauce, really? Yeah. <laughs> Fucking Irish guy makes sauce. Look, we had to. I mean, Colin, you got you got the ultimate Irish name, Colin, Colin Quinn. Quinn. Well, you know, it's funny you said that because one of the things I identify with in the movie yeah. is when I was growing up, nobody was named Colin those days, yeah. and just like just like Colangelo, yeah. they people go, "Me, what's your name?" And I go, "Colin," and they go. Collins. I go, no, Colin. So she said, we're going to call you Quinn. Nobody wanted to pronounce my name. Wow. Same, not, it wasn't as hard as Collagero, but nobody was named Colin. So people wouldn't say my name because it just, they couldn't be bothered. Yeah. So they go Quinn or yeah. Collins or whatever they, so when I saw the movie, I was like, oh, that's interesting yeah. that, that that happened with your name, Collagero, you know? How are you? How you doing, Chaz? How, How are, are you? Good, Good to see you. you. Hi. We yeah. saw your play. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much. Wow. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, Colin. Colin, get over here. He's trying to. Uh, he's trying to get the Irish out of here. Mr. Moore, one of the most famous comedians in the world, right here. Mr. Colin I'm Quinn. Big. I'm big. Oh, Colin Quinn, of course. This is Colin Quinn. Hey, holy shit. See? Oh, come on. Yeah. I know. See, the Irish guy knew me. I That's I right. I got this. Come on. All right, go oh, ahead. Take a picture. Hurry up. <laughs> come on. You're Irish, yeah. aren't you? Oh, I'm Irish, all right. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he knew me. Uh, you ready? <laughs> yeah. Hey, I need five boxes of raviolis. I'm giving him a box because he's going to, I told him about this. The, the greatest, bo the greatest raviolis in the world, Bogatti raviolis. How long have you been here, Chris? It's gone 88 years. 88 wow. years. Hear that, folks? Amazing. What's worse, what's the biggest insult of Italian if somebody's cheap, right? Oh, yeah. oh, oh yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Oh they God. don't like people that don't yeah. oh. cough it up. And bad tippers. You guys are always the best tippers. Every time I bought 10 of the Italians came in, I was excited. Because they were great tippers. I, I wish you good tippers. I wish start out tipping well, but by the end of the night, they get drunk and the bills get wet and they start slipping them off the bar slowly to buy another round. But they start out well. Their intentions are good. <laughs> well, thank you. That was very nice. We were just talking about how you, you've got that old Italian habit of cash because, and I was telling Dante, he agrees, we feel there's something, you guys feel like there's something effeminate about credit cards. And he goes, and Dante goes, yeah, I notice he gives me the side eye every time I take out my Amex. With the rubber band. I always have the cash with the rubber band. The rubber band, band yeah. Rubber band, yeah. If you came down, let's say you got off the train. Right. Well, you take the D train. Right, you get off Fordham Road, and you walk down this block, even at 11, 12 at night, yeah. there was activity, right? There was always, always people, always. even if you, a couple of old ladies in the window, yeah. a couple of guys in the social club, yeah. everybody's awake. Yo, where is he? Gino's Pastry Shop, the best pastry in the city. That's Jerome, the owner there. You know Colin Quinn, the great Colin Quinn? The Rock was up here. The Rock doesn't eat pastry. I don't see any Colin Quinn. You know, sometimes you're too big <laughs> to be on the wall. Same thing with Joe's Pizza. One of my most infuriating, yet I kind of like it now, is that I, I went to Joe's Pizza when it was not even that low. It was down the block. And every picture of every Tom, Dick, and Harry, and not me, but then I kind of like it. It's like me and the owner are like, hey, what's up? Like, we're too cool to do this. Or he doesn't know who the hell I am. He just thinks, oh, this customer. <laughs> it's one of the two, probably the second one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, show him, show him, 
show him. He'll get it. He'll film it. He'll film it. He'll film it. I want to see it. Yeah, no way. Oh. That's brilliant. Trippy, man. Trippy. What? Right? I saw you. This is what the crazy shit is. It was Fred Siegel in L.A. Fred Siegel. On Melrose. That's right. I remember that place. I, the last time I saw it, I turned around. I had to have money. That was like the hot place. Hot right? place, Fred Siegel. Fred Siegel. Right? It was like, everybody was like, Fred Siegel. Fred Siegel. Did you live in L.A., Colin? Yeah, I lived in L.A. for about three years. You did? In the 90s, 90 to 93. No, 1994. Did you go to the, the, the with Nikki Blair's? Where? Nikki Blair's. Back I didn't go to Nikki Blair's, but I went to Giuseppe Franco's to get my hair cut. <laughs> yeah. Giuseppe Franco. That was the spot where everybody hung out. Oh. Take it easy. Pleasure. Yeah. Yeah, I went to Giuseppe Franco. That was like the hot. Remember, that was like everybody from New York oh. is like Giuseppe's. And, um, yeah, I went to um, all those places, all the clubs, you know. I can't remember them, but my big Hello. and tall books. Hi. Hello, yes. Yeah, Hi. I just met my parents, and you made my dad's day. Oh, I did? Yeah, he was the one with the, the Irish daughter-in-law. Oh! <laughs> yeah. You're the Irish well, daughter-in-law. The Irish daughter-in-law. That's my sister-in-law. But yeah. my Come on, take a photo. Get right. in there. Hey, Go ahead. <laughs> They're in from Montgomery, huh? Yes. Yes, sir. Thank Good. you so Pleasure. much. Pleasure. Bye. I told, picture you said crowd used to put me to sleep when I was a kid. I watched. Oh, it did. Time. It damaged you for life. Yeah, I have a warped sense of humor now. <laughs> yeah. And my parents saw you at your restaurant. Oh, that's that's, that's so funny. All right, sure. Yeah. Oh, Thanks, so brother. Just oh, a jewelry shop around the corner. Oh, nice. Flexes, everything for you. Oh, nice. Thank Let's you. It. And what's your Let's name? George. Oh, George. Let's Let's it. It. Oh, okay. Ah, see. Okay. Hold it up. He's got Rolexes, he said. He's got Rolexes. Yeah, I don't know how you do it. Everybody stops you. I got to talk to that. What, 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 what story he has? Down the block that way, he said. What, what did he say, straight down? He said just down that way. All right, I'm going to go check it out on my way back. Yeah. I got to see if they're real Rolexes. <laughs> yeah, get him while he's in a giddy mood. You get a, That's the thing. If you go in a week, he has a mood swing. Suddenly, it's twice the price. When did you go on the road as a, as a singer? No, I, I won't do that. What's that? You mean just singing, you mean? Well, you went with the band. Did you, you go on the road a lot? Oh, I went on, oh, back then, yeah. That's all I did, 10 years. Yeah, but yes, you went out for what, like 70 to 80? 72 to 70, 70 to 80. Wow. And did you see the world or mostly just the country? Just the United States. Some, uh, in Europe. Yeah. Some things in Europe. We went to Europe a couple of times. And did you know you wanted to be an actor and writer? I always wanted to be an actor. I kept studying at the, uh, uh, and then Lee Strasberg was the one who said, look, you can't keep coming in and coming out. Really? If you really want to be an actor, you got to, I said, yeah, but I make money that way. He goes, yeah. well, then you got to starve. That's what he said. Did you say, Lee, you're not my father. Don't talk to me like that. You teach. Uh, Are you all right? Oh, hey, my God. Thank you. Hey, man. Thank you. My pleasure. Oh, God. Really, you're a good man. Thank you. Thanks. Any, anything you need, anytime you want. Thank you. Oh, really? Thanks. Let me know. All right, guys.